Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Kingdom Transformation Network's Morning Prayer. I am your host, Coach Shaiteria Jones, your spiritual midwife, helping you to see you as Jesus Christ sees you. Um, I help you to do that by helping you to overcome fear, to receive healing and deliverance from past hurts and trauma, as well as uncovering hidden patterns that hinder destiny. I help you take the word of God and make it applicable to your very situation. Because when you can appropriately apply the word of God to your life, you can see the results that Jesus Christ died for you to have. Listen, on Facebook, share this broadcast. We are about to press in and pray this morning. Clubhouse. Go ahead and ping some people into the room. Ping, 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 ping. Ping them in. Wait, can we turn that down a little? Turn it down a little bit. Thank you, baby. You're so good at this. Thank you. Um, so go ahead, ping some people into the room. Share the broadcast as we are going to press in and pray today. Um, we're going to be pressing in and praying concerning clearing rubble, right? So we are preparing to enter into a realm where we begin to see ourselves as royalty. And in order for us to see ourselves as we truly are, we have got to enter into the place where we take down the lenses um, that we have seen ourselves through. Do you want to go over there and hear that? So I can turn it up for you. You want to sit on the couch and turn yeah. it up? Okay, give me just one second. No, you're not. Not this one. This one? Yes. Here you go, baby. You can hear better? Yeah. There you go. All right. Sorry about that. So, um... In order for us to see ourselves as royalty, we're going to have to clear the other lenses and the other perspectives, the other vantage points that we have had in our lives. And so um, we're going to be pressing in um, and praying concerning how we see ourselves. And when we clear the rubble, what we're doing is we are, um, we are going to be looking at the state of our hearts. And so I am pulling up the parable of the sower right now so we can um, take a look at that and see how it impacts our lives, how, you know, God wanting to, to give us this seed and give us this word, um, sometimes it doesn't necessarily take root the way we would desire for it. And so I'm reading from Matthew, the 13th chapter. And it says, the same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside and great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the seashore and he spake many things unto them in parables saying, behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. 
Therefore speak I to them in parables, because seeing they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Least at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and shall understand with their hearts, and should be converted. And, um, and, should heal, and I should heal them. And so, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed in stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Lord, you desire for us to be a people who bear much fruit. You desire for us to be a people who receive a harvest. You desire for us to be a people who walk in the fullness of the promises that you have for us. You desire for us to be a people who live from your kingdom, living from heaven to earth and not from earth to heaven. And we have had many weights placed upon us because of the experiences that we have encountered in this life. And we are asking for you to reveal unto us, O oh God, reveal unto us the heavy burden that we are bearing in our hearts, that is not allowing your word to take root and grow, that is hindering us from seeing ourselves as royalty. For you have called us forth as a royal priesthood, a holy generation, O oh Father God. You have called us forth to show your praises in the earth realm. And we admit there are moments when we are discouraged. And we admit there are moments where we are overwhelmed. And we admit there are moments where we are broken. And we admit there are moments where we just don't want to go on, O oh God. But we want to delight ourselves in you that you would give us the desires of our hearts. We want to reposition ourselves in a posture in such a way that we can hear clearly what you are saying to us. In this hour and in this season, oh God, we want every shackle and every chain to fall off of us. We want the rubble to be clear so we can build on a firm foundation. Lord, we have been a people who have trusted in horses and we have trusted in chariots. We have trusted in those who are close to us and, and, and those who were trying to get close to us, oh God. We have trusted in um, governmental systems and we have trusted in businesses, oh God. But we have failed to put our trust in you totally and completely because we feel like you'll let us down. But today we come before you honest. We are honest about the areas of our lives that we have not given you access to. We have desired and delighted in controlling where you could go in our lives because we felt like if we gave you total and complete reign and rulership in our lives, that there would be places where you would destroy us, where we would be unrecognizable. There would be places where we wouldn't like who we have become. But the truth of the matter is we even wrestle with that now. Because there are areas in our lives where we are displeased, oh God. There are areas in our lives where we are in dysfunction, oh God. There are areas in our lives where we feel like it's in disrepair. And so we give you our lives today. 
We enter into a place where we ask you to enter into our hearts, oh God. We ask you to sift us as we, oh God. We ask you to purify us. We ask you to sanctify us. We ask you to call us forth as gold, pulling out every ounce of draws. Lord, we need the rubble clear so we can build on a firm foundation. We have been a people who have been accustomed to... uh, to weak foundations, oh God. And we have been a people who have been accustomed to uh, wobbly foundations, oh God. But we are a people who are looking to delight in being connected to you as our firm foundation. For your word says that if we build our house on Jesus Christ, which is the solid rock, it should be able to withstand. But if we build it upon sand, when the storms and the winds and the waves come, it will sink. And so we are looking for a way to enter into you, into a place of stability, into a place, oh Father God, where we can repent and we can allow you to change our hearts, oh God. Where we can allow you to redirect us and where we can be honest with you concerning who we are and all that we have encountered in this life, oh God. Lord, we have entered into relationships that have battered and they have bruised us, oh God. And we are leery of people coming after them, oh God. But we are asking for you to heal our hearts today. We are asking for you to mend what has been broken. We are asking that you would change our perspective on who we are because of all that we have been through. Because of all and the ways that we have been mishandled, oh God. We have not seen ourselves as royalty. We have not understood what it meant to be a royal priesthood. To be a holy generation. To be one that is set apart. We have not understood uh, what our capacity for royalty looks like. And so we are asking, oh, Father God, that you give us clarity, that you show us, that you show us, oh, Father God, what it means for us to enter into clearing the rubble of Father God, what it means for us to enter into a realm where we allow you to be our God, oh, Father God, the God of royalty, the God of royalty, oh, God. The God of royalty. The God of royalty. Okay, you can watch it on TV. You just calm down, okay? Okay. All right, I'll hold on to this, all right? I don't want it. Okay, do you want to help me finish praying? No. Okay, just a little bit. And so we just thank you, oh God, that you are the God of royalty, that you are the God who is sincere and you reign supreme, oh God. And so we thank you in the name of Jesus for pulling us into purpose in this hour. We thank you for helping us to break off every yoke of bondage that was sent to steal, to kill, and to destroy. We thank you for teaching us how to assess the very state of our soul so we can enter into the realm where we allow you to restore us. Lord, that we wouldn't be clinging to our past, O oh God, but we would look to the hills from which cometh our help, knowing that our help comes from you. Lord, that you are our rock and our redeemer, that you are the rose of Sharon, that you truly are the lily and the valley. Valley, that they would not just be names that we call off for oh God, but we would intimately know you in that posture. That as we begin to know you as the names that you are called by, that we would begin to believe that we truly are royalty. And so we thank you in the name of Jesus for calling us forth as royalty, for posturing us in a place of power, oh God. And for calling us your own. Lord, we honor you. We give you glory. And we ask that you continue to do what only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. So we are entering into uh, the place where we begin to see ourselves as royalty. And um, we're going to spend 30 days discovering the royal you, right? Because oftentimes we don't really look at ourselves as royalty. And I know we call ourselves queens, right? And we call ourselves kings, But sometimes we don't fully embody what it means to be a king and a queen. And God wants us to discover what the royal you looks like, what the royal me looks like. He wants us to take a look at ourselves from a royal standpoint and what it means to be kings in the earth realm. When I say kings in the earth realm, I'm not talking about our gender, but I'm talking about our position in Jesus Christ, okay? And so we are going to look at that. We're going to clear the rubble for five days. We're going to pray for five days beginning today until Friday about clearing the rubble. 
Because as we read in the parable of the sower, we see that there are many hindrances for the word of God being able to take root and grow in our lives. There are many blockades that stop the fruitfulness that God has called us to. In Genesis, it says that we were to be fruitful and multiply. Every seed reproduces after its own kind. And so what we have to do is break up the fallow ground. We have to break up the fallow ground that is keeping us from being a people who can reproduce is keeping us from being a people who see ourselves as royalty we're going to look at different types of soil and we're going to examine the type of soil that we have currently that's hindering the move of god from happening and so as we look at the different types of soil we're going to ask God to give us the kind of soil that was in the Garden of Eden. Okay, we're going to, we need to have the soil that's going to produce the way that God designed us to produce. We have a specific divine design for reproduction. But we have entered into a place where we uh, were unable to reproduce according with the word of God uh, because of what we have experienced in this life. And so we're going to spend five days clearing the rubble and then we're going to enter into the realm of us being royalty. <clears throat> and so I am um, uh, producing an ebook to go with this if you are interested in that as well. Uh, but we're going to spend five days clearing the rubble and then we're going to spend 30 days getting to know the ro our royal selves, okay? So it's going to be a total of 35 days of us really uh, digging deep into this area and into this aspect of royalty so we can really get serious about who God is calling us to be in this season. And so I'll have more information for you uh, with the book. I, I should have the pre-order link for that uh, tomorrow. And so we can um, get that book by next week when we start praying out of it. And so if you have any questions or concerns, you can let me know. Normally, I hop on to uh, Clubhouse to do prayer requests, but can you all send me your prayer requests, Facebook and Clubhouse? I have a couple things. My honey is up right now. You can see my boo if you on the Facebook. She cuddling with her mama, you know, and so I'm going to go love on my boo right now. And... um. Uh, make sure she is okay. And so I love you all. I will be on the clubhouse at the 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm talking about not letting fear steal your voice created for a purpose. And it's going to be amazing. I'm excited about this evening um, as uh, or afternoon as God has already been talking to me about what he wants um, shared with his people today. And so I'm excited about it. So if you have a prayer request, Facebook, send it to me. Um, on Facebook or Clubhouse, Clubhouse, <laughs> she just hugged me really tight. Um, or Clubhouse, you can send it to me um, via Instagram or Facebook as well. And so I'm looking forward to seeing you guys um, tonight at 4 p.m. <laughs> She's making a funny face. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you tonight at 4 p.m. Um, and tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Say bye-bye, people. You don't want to say bye-bye? <laughs> <laughs> all right. I will see you all later. Bye. <laughs> You're making all, all the faces. Gotta make some faces.